Hello bookworms, I'm Hannah and this is the first of seven spotlight reviews I plan to post, one for each of the books nominated for this year's Andre Norton Award, which is given to the best science fiction or fantasy, young adult or middle grade novel published in the US within the last year. I'll be doing something a little different with these reviews. I'll begin by giving you a tour through the book's opening pages, then I'll share my thoughts on the book's strengths and weaknesses. Today I'm talking about the young adult historical fiction book The Lie Tree by Frances Hardinge. The story takes place in the mid-19th century and follows 14-year-old Faith Sunderly, when we first meet Faith, she's in a boat amidst a choppy gray sea, just visible on the horizon beyond a layer of mist are jagged islands. One of the islands has caves where a slew of fossils were recently discovered, and that is where Faith and her family are headed, because her father is a natural scientist who specializes in fossils. Faith is sitting atop the family luggage, listening to the gulls in the air when it starts to rain. Her mother and younger brother move to join her beneath a sheltered area near the stern, and she cannot help but overhear her brother inquire why the whole family has been brought on this excursion when, in the past, their father has always journeyed alone. And that's the moment when we see the first glimmer of a mystery in need of solving. As the ferry approaches the remote island of Vale, Faith observes dark waves crashing against brown cliffs, spewing foam and salt water into the air. She sees pitted headlands and deep caves. Then the ferry turns in the churning water and pulls into a harbor. From there, she takes a jouncing carriage ride along cobbled streets. In time, the harbor fades from view and the carriage climbs a rugged zigzag lane creaking and swaying on its way to an old brownstone farmhouse where Faith and her family will reside during their stay on Vale. Faith doesn't wait long before diving into the mystery of her family's unexplained departure from Kent, but what starts as a small investigation quickly spirals into something far more dangerous than Faith could have imagined. On her quest for truth, Faith moves through a setting that is easily imagined because of the way Hardinge capitalizes on the time in which the story takes place. Hardinge pulls this off in two commendable ways. First, her writing suits the time period without being stuffy or plain. Her prose is as refined and elegant yet playful as an aristocratic debutante with blushing cheeks. Second, Hardinge seamlessly integrates intriguing historical details relevant to the 19th century throughout the narrative, such as the way left-handed people were discriminated against, the popularity of death portraits taken after a loved one had died, and the study of craniometry. The most prevalent topic discussed is The Origin of the Species by Charles Darwin, which was first published in 1859, nine years before Faith's story takes place. Within this historical context, Hardinge reveals the effect Darwin's theory had on Victorian society. The notion that man descended from apes suggested that God was not needed to create man and therefore undermined traditional religious thinking and views on morality. Darwin's theory of evolution is a point of great conflict for Faith's father, who is both a fossil hunter and a man of God. But for Faith, Darwin's theory of evolution is a point of great interest because she is a closeted scientist. That's what makes her such a compelling protagonist. Faith is an unconventional young woman for her time. Her progressive way of thinking, her interest in learning, and her fascination with science are not desirable qualities in a respectable young lady. She's expected to be dull, demure, and to know that she is inferior to men, but Faith cannot help how inquisitive she is. She is a 19th century Nancy Drew who cannot resist a good mystery and has an insatiable hunger for learning. Learning. Despite her shared interest in her father's profession, she's prohibited from pursuing her passion for no reason other than her gender. She's often forced to downplay her intelligence and to privately remind herself that no matter what anyone says, she is a scientist. Resilience and self-confidence are some of her greatest characteristics. In addition to Faith's thirst for scientific knowledge, she also craves her father's affection, but he's unwilling to recognize her potential because of her gender. His efforts to stifle her are quite cruel, though admittedly he doesn't say anything that would have been unorthodox in the mid to late 19th century. It may seem odd that Faith would remain devoted to a parent who is so neglectful and punishing, but I've seen other people do that in real life, so for me, her desperation and her fear of being unloved ring with truth. It would not be inaccurate to say that the pacing in this book is somewhat slow, more reminiscent of classic literature than a modern title, but within its pages you will find scandal, betrayal, murder, deceit, and a tree unlike 
any tree you've ever heard of. Before I wrap this up, a quick note on this edition illustrated by Chris Riddell. His signature pencil drawings captured the characters just as I had imagined them, and any time I stumbled upon one of his full-page illustrations, I was delighted. Some of the illustrations, however, are covered by the text almost completely. I'm not sure why the book was laid out this way, especially since there's a blank page at the end of every chapter, but it's a minor complaint. Bottom line, with complex themes and intoxicating prose, The Lie Tree is a harrowing mystery sleuthed by a praiseworthy female protagonist. If you've read The Lie Tree by Frances Hardinge, tell me what you thought of it in the comments below. Or if you're planning to read the book, tell me what was it about the book that grabbed your attention. Thanks, everybody!